love the new wheels. Oh, you've got to be careful what you wish for. You wish for something bigger, and look what I came up with. It's a Jayco. <laughs> it's a Jayco. Investigating intolerances with you, Rich, was so interesting, season two. I want more, Rich. Intolerant Cooks, season three, here we come. <laughs> Rich, do you think we have a little coffee break? Okay, hang on. Let me pull over. Yeah, this little beachy spot here. Perfect. How good is this, Rich? Ah, awesome. You and I down the Great Ocean Road. Nice coffee to start the morning. Uh, but what about I give you another little way to start the morning with a little drink that I've got? OK, bring it okay. on. Better be healthy. Oh, you, you're really talking yeah, drink. Yeah, I'm talking. Is this alcoholic? It's a bit early, no. Rich. <laughs> but it's a nice, great way to start the day. OK. Livestream aloe vera juice. This is what you should start your day with as opposed to your coffee, coffee which you do. Ooh. OK. So I'm going to have a little bit of white peach. OK, a little bit of mint. A bit of lemon. A little bit of soda water. Beautiful. Look at that. There we are. Thank you. It is delicious. Thank you. Now, I hear there's a little place around the corner called Captain Moonlight. Have I've you heard, heard of it? I've heard about this person, Captain yeah. Moonlight. Do you want to go? Yeah, let's go. Right. <laughs> now, look, we're here looking for Matt. He's down here somewhere on the beach, probably searching for octopus or something. I oh, know, there he is over there. Oh, you know, you're Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> he is Greek. I know. Hey, Matt. Hey, Karen. Hello. Good. Good to see you. Matt, is, nice to meet you. This is Richard. Yeah, the sorry. word on the street is there's a little place around here that we really must stop into. Some say, some say. It's beautiful. <laughs> Captain Moonlight. Captain Moonlight, yep. I heard only good things. Yeah, it's great. It's a real nice place, hey. How long have you been here? Oh, about a year now, Karen. Yeah, it's been it's been really nice. I'm guessing I know what's on the plate up there. <laughs> a lot of seafood, yeah? Definitely. You should come have a look. Okay, oh. let's go. Let's Woo. go. Amazing. Gorgeous. Oh, and oh, this, is, this is my beautiful partner, Gemma. Uh -huh. I don't know how you find time to work. Look no. at this. Oh, it's not a bad office, that's for sure. So how did you guys end up in Anglesey? We used to come here every weekend, and yeah. as soon as I saw this, view. it reminded me of when I, I, I lived in Greece and I had a little taverna and the beautiful seafood. Captain Moonlight. It's a playful, bossy sort of name. Where did it come from? Well, it sort of came from a, yeah. like a really unknown bushranger. It's, yeah. Oh, it's real. It's yeah. a real person. It's a real yeah. person. <laughs> Very eccentric. Sort yeah, of. and he was really charismatic, and, but still a thing. Up yeah, to just, no good anyway. Exactly. With a name so, like that. Yeah, well, I think it's a fabulous name for a restaurant, and thank you for having us here. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to cook a few things today. I hope that's all right. Absolutely. <laughs> Free reign. This place is yeah. yours. This place awesome. is yours. You take it on. On the deck, Rich, I think right. it's going to be perfect for right, us. Let's go. <laughs> Pushing. So, <laughs> what are we making? Well, I'm going to do a cured smoked salmon uh, with sprouted black quinoa, apple, and a fresh herb salad. Oh, delicious. Jesus. Look where we are. And it's perfect for where we are, too. And also perfect for those who are suffering from gluten intolerance and yeah. lactose intolerance. Tolerance. So, tell me, how do we go about smoking the fish? Well, actually, I've got some lovely hickory here, which I've soaked in water, because that will hit the fire first, basically, so you don't want that to burst into flames. Um, and this is a little finely chopped hickory, which you sprinkle over, and that'll give us a smoke. And we've got our beautiful matador smoking box here. So the chips go in the bottom in that tray. So I'm just going to put that in here to warm up. Simple as that. Simple as that. All right, I'm going to cure the salmon. So I've got a 500 gram bit of salmon there. I'm going to start off with three tablespoons of sea salt. So the idea of curing the salmon is just infusing flavour into the fish before yeah. you smoke it. Can I do something with the lime or the ginger? You can do something with the ginger. I need about a little bit of a sort of a bit of a knob that much. Finely grated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, two and a half tablespoons of coconut sugar. So I'm going to use the rind of one lime. Is that enough ginger? That's enough. That's a little bit. Okay. In with that. In with that. So now we just want to mix that up. It's a dry it's a cure dry cure for the fish. So the idea is yeah. with a dry cure like this, we're going to be able to get all sides of the, of the fish. So salmon. salmon. Let me guess. That's around 500 grams. I reckon. Bones out, skin on. Bones out, skin on. It's about 510, I would say. Oh. <laughs> so you're putting that to bed for how long? That. That's about two hours. In the fridge. Yep. 
cover it, right. put it in the fridge two hours. You don't want to leave it more than two hours because then it will start to cook, basically. It's actually, yeah. You can over-cure. You can, yeah. <laughs> Smoker. So what we do is slide that out, get some of the wet wood chips, yes, and lay them down. I reckon that's about good. Okay. So under that towel is the salmon. Allow me. Ta da! <laughs> now that's been curing for about two hours. Should we go into the smoker? Yeah, please. Yeah. So I'm thinking that you need maybe to brush that with a little bit of oil. Yeah. Because there's a little bit of sugar in the cure. Yeah. And we don't want the fish to stick. Right. All right, this has got to 250 degrees. You can see a little bit of smoke there. Yep. I'm going to put on this fine chicory, which should start to take off. No time at all. And then put that on there, like so. And ta da! Okay, that's five minutes on high heat and then about five minutes on low. Yep. yep. And let's make a salad. So we've got cucumber, we're going to have crisp apple, we're going to have herbs, we're going to have coriander, mint, a little bit of basil, and we've got some lotus black quinoa, which I'm sprouting. Goes very well in the salad, activates all the enzymes. Wonderful. And so looking forward to enjoying it sprouted because I've never had it that way. Yeah. I'm so just slicing one cucumber, is that Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm going to make the dressing. So I've got macadamia nut oil. I've got some mirin. And I'm going to add some fresh lime to that. Wonderful. So the apple will give it that sort of little bit of sweetness, which is going to make it really sing. Yeah, I think so and, too. And, you know, and not only that, you've got the texture and the colour. Um, this modi apple has a great crisp, fresh sweetness to it. We should check that salmon. Yeah. Right, so now I'm going to turn down the heat. So this is going to slow those chips and reduce the heat yeah. inside. It Don't open the hood at this stage because we're trying to, to keep the <laughs> chamber shut with all the smoke inside. Yeah. So another five minutes. Another yeah. five minutes and then off. OK, I'm going to use some Celtic Lotus sea salt here. Now, this is a wet sea salt, so it's got so lots of minerals and everything else through the trace elements in there that haven't been taken out. So Really good for you. Really good for you. So about one and a half teaspoons. Give that a little bit of that. Do you want some lime squeezed on this so they don't go brown? Yeah, I think we should. OK, so this is where we actually turn it off and let that initial smoke and heat out. Ooh, smells amazing. So you can see how it's beginning to have those beautiful, crusty colour on it. It's looking awesome. And then now the fish is just going to cook on the residual heat. Yeah. And continue right. smoking ever so gently. For a right. little bit of five minutes. For another minutes. five minutes? Let's, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's start with our quinoa. What I like especially about using the black quinoa yeah. is the contrast. Yeah. It's so beautiful. So in this we're all going to add some herbs, basically a bunch of coriander leaves. Okay, apple okay. incoming. Yeah. Yum. All right, mint. But yeah. you could use any soft herb you like. Yeah. Just pick one that is fragrant and works well with salmon. Yeah. Oh, look, the mint really goes well with the apple. That's like okay. really it's Okay, marriage. the mint's a must. It is Rich's recipe after all. Yeah, she is a bit <laughs> monster. <laughs> I'm not a monster. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. That salmon's got to be done. And look, Karen. There we are. Look how perfect that piece of tassel salmon is. Yeah, that is. The idea is that the skin provides a sort of protective layer for the flesh when you smoke. So, yeah. you know, most people love crispy skin salmon, but not in this case, guys. Can we let that sit for a bit? Yep. So, dress the salad. Dress that. It's a very light dressing. Some simple vehicles are the best ones. So now I'm going to flip the salmon over to reveal the skin and then gently... Oh. That is take, mouth... Take that off there. Wateringly delicious. delicious. <laughs> All right. There you are. Oh, me too. Yeah, you too. So I would just break the fish up tenderly over the salad. Delicious. This is the contrast of the pink mm. and the black quinoa. Gorgeous. Yeah. We can throw some dressing over the top of that. 
Yum, yum. Yum, yum. May we taste? May we taste. I can't, I just can't wait. Herbs. Mm. That's superb. So it's delicious. The brining is such a perfect way of getting so much flavour into the salmon and then the smoking just really mm. takes it up another notch. And it's again that salty, sweet, fresh with the apple. It's amazing. Delicious. Mm. So there you have it. My smoked cured salmon with apple, fresh herbs and sprouted black quinoa. So Rich, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to shift that barbecue aside and bring in another piece of equipment to do my recipe this afternoon. I can't wait to see what you're going to cook me. <laughs> you're on notice. You're going to love it. <laughs> Better than this, hey? No, it doesn't. Our kitchen Amazing. for the day is just glorious, and so is this bounty of seafood. I'm cooking a dish that's going to feed many mouths, yep. obviously. Obviously. Um, and it's a paella, if you like. Paella? It's paella, paella. How do we say it in Australia? Paella. Paella. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a swear word. <laughs> anyway, it is a great dish for those with gluten intolerance, lactose intolerance, but it's not necessarily FODMAT friendly. But can be. Well... If we take out <laughs> those, can you do it? You're setting a challenge for me? Yes, I am. OK, I can. I can. Right. I can make this FODMAT friendly. You watch me. I'm going <laughs> to add more celery and a few more spices and use a FODMAP friendly stock, and we should be on the right track. All right. I hope. Okay, starting off with, we'll use two chorizo. Yeah. Sliced and diced, if yep. you could. And I'm just gonna slice up some of this fresh calamari here. And you're literally just slicing through. Just like that. How do you want these cut, like, like that? Yeah, like yep. a rough. Beautiful. A rough dice. I've got a couple of sets of um, tentacles here. Yeah. Right. I'm just gonna cut these just in half. Rich, if you want, we yep. can cut up some of that bannock burn chicken. Yep. Just into a rough dice. Now, I love using the thigh part yep. of the chicken. I've also left the skin on. Again, there's flavour in the skin, mm. and we're going to fry that off beautifully. OK, Rich, in with a good amount of oil to yep. start with. I'm going to put this chorizo into the pan, and it's going to flavour the oil beautifully, and then we're going to take the chorizo out. See how the chorizo is frying and, yep. and then the spices in the chorizo yeah, are just staying in the oil? Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, OK. So that's enough. It's fried. It's lovely and golden. Just lifting it from the pan and leaving the oil behind. Yeah. What I want to do, Rich, is yeah. actually fry off the seafood straight in. We're not cooking it right through because mm. you don't want to overcook it. And also, can you pick me out six prawns that have been peeled? Yeah. Beautiful Australian thin prawns. See, the calamari is just starting to look a little bit cooked and we're going to come out. Yeah. Now, Rich, can you actually grab me about yeah. five stalks of celery? Yep. Pop it on the board. So, as I said, it's mm. not cooked through, mm. it's just seasoned and seared beautifully. A little sneaky way of cutting the celery is just to run your knife down. And you're literally creating a dice. That's right. Yeah. Maybe just push your chicken aside, wipe a part of the board down, because yeah. I need you to chop up some of those always fresh red capsicum. Great, gives me something to do. Oh, no, awesome. I'm not going to have you stand there and do nothing. <laughs> All right. So instead of using the garlic and the onion... Yeah. Which I know which you're I'm, upset I'm, about. I'm coping with, I'm yeah. coping with the idea. I'm going to be using the celery. OK, and celery has a great savoury flavour. Mm -hmm especially when it's caramelised. I'm going to throw this in because I don't want my pan to So in a dish of this hot. size, how many people would you say that it would serve? I think we're going to serve at least four really hungry people or six to eight not so hungry people. Yeah. We're going to add the always fresh red peppers. All right. Here we go. They do have that smoky charred flavour mm. and a great texture to them. Let's add some spice. So paprika. Yeah. This is smoky and sweet at the same time. And you have got the cayenne pepper. Got some kick? It's got some kick, but I love chilli, so... Oh, you well, know, well, let's... It's great. Dump it in. OK, let's put a couple of teaspoons of okay. smoky paprika. 
one teaspoon one of the teaspoon. cayenne. That's a big eight okay, teaspoon. That was, it was. Yeah. Okay, let's add the chicken in, and I'm going to add the tomato paste. All right. Add my tomato paste. There we go. One Keep tablespoon. In. Chicken in. Okay, in with the... Chorizo. Chorizo. Okay, what else is going in now? We're going to get the rice. Okay. It's looking good. I've got 400 grams of rice. Now, this is an arborio rice. It's easy to get. You do yep. need a short grain rice. Mm. Sprinkling that in. Now, the idea is we're going to toast the rice amongst the caramelised celery, the peppers, the spice. We're getting there. This is looking really good. And the idea here is yep. that all of that flavour goes into the rice grain first, yeah? So I've got 1.5 litres of chicken stock here. Do look for a FODMAP friendly stock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love how all that beautiful coloured oil is now look at that. Is sitting on the top of it. It's really important to mm. have a generous amount of oil yeah. in this style rice dish. Because therein lies the flavour, if I'm not wrong. Absolutely correct. And we yeah. don't lid this, it cooks. It evaporates and intensifies mm. in flavour. Rich, why don't you grab a few prawns? Okay. Let's pop them in. Yeah. Oh, Rich, I have forgotten. We're adding a, some tomato to this. I want to really make it rich and mm. luscious. And there's nothing better than a can of Ardmona tomatoes. I'm just going to drain off a little bit of the liquid because we've got... Already enough in there? Yeah. Yep. Scattered through. Nice. Nice. Now, back Beautiful. to the calamari. And the other thing, let's do a couple of handfuls of those mussels. Yum. How good does that look? It's look not even cooked yet. I know. This needs to cook for around 15 to 20 minutes. Long Shall long. we take in the view? <laughs> <laughs> Baby, let's go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Smell that, Rich. It's great. Now, look, I'm just going to... Mm. Check the bottom. Another trick. Take the spoon, or you can take this end, and we're just going to see how the crust is going. Because I really do want one. I'm going to see if there's any resistance. There's a crust building up now. Yeah. I think this is done. The heat's off. Yeah. Can you give me a hand just lifting it up? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh. oh. Superb. And then drop on the lemons. It's not traditional, but I just like... But it is worthy. To dress up yeah. that seafood and just a little bit of the coriander. Well, Rich, there you have it. It's my Great Ocean Road inspired paella. And the best thing about it is it's FODMAP friendly. Well, fingers crossed we should go and find Matt and Gemma and see what they think. I reckon they're down All on right. the beach. Come on. What I reckon. Great Ocean Road inspired paella. We thought we'd bring some down for you. Oh. Karen, are you missing anything here? I don't think so. Are you guys missing anything? Not at all. No. See, we did this without onion and garlic. Get out. Yeah. It is a FODMAP friendly paella. And yeah. I'll tell you what, the flavour is just as good as any. Mm. I agree. It's delicious. Even if I do say so myself. Yeah. I think we all say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. A bonheur, oui, mes amis, je vais marcher sous vos drapeaux, je vais marcher sous vos drapeaux. Everyone loves an ice cream. Oh, me too. So I've set myself a little bit of a challenge. I want to do a dairy-free ice cream for you. Mm, and how have you done that? So I'm going to use cashew nuts, soy milk. And it's going to be a, a popsicle as mm. such. Do you know how hip they are at the moment? No. Fancy restaurants, even nightclubs and bars, they're all doing the popsicle thing. So you're right on trend. Excellent. All right, so we've got a cup of cashews that have been soaking overnight in soy milk. Oh, they really swell up, don't yeah. they? So this is adding body to your popsicle. This is the real base to it. A third of a cup of desiccated coconut. 80 mils of maple syrup. Sweetness, very important. Sweetness. And lovely strong espresso. That's about 160 mils. And now we blitz. <laughs> the last, but not least, 80 mils of coconut oil. Mm, I reckon that's your secret ingredient. Mm. One last little blitz. All right, here we go. Du, du, du. Perfect. You've no. done this before, Rich. I have. There we are. And 
pop the popsicles pop. into the freezer. How long do they take <coughs> to freeze? Overnight. Okay. Well, we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, these will be in the freezer overnight, Karen. I'm glad you made some ahead of time because I really want to try it. Now, a little bit of hot water. Just pop yeah. them in. All this is doing is just taking the chill off the popsicles. Yep. Come on. Ah. There we go. Look at that. Magnificent. Ta da. Thank you. So, Rich, to dress it up, I see you've got some maple syrup. Yep. A bit of chocolate, shredded coconut, coffee. Yeah. So, a little bit of a dip. Yep. And then it's just a matter of choosing what you'd like to do. And I reckon a little roll and some coconut for me. Okay. And I'm going to go for some chocolate. So there you have it. Our espresso maple syrup popsicle made with sanitarium soy milk. <laughs> I haven't had this in a, since a nightclub in <coughs> 1994. <coughs> what do you reckon? Really? Come on. No, that's... The coconut oil for me is making the texture of, of the popsicle really like a, the perfect ice cream texture. It's really mm. lovely. Makes really good ice cream. Mm. It's dairy free, gluten free. Just damn right delicious. Damn right rich. delicious. Really delicious.